I'm so excited to have Melissa Foote on Women in Action podcast today. And Melissa started her professional journey as a teacher 18 years uh, ago. Um, well, she did. She, she was a teacher for 13, 18 years. But then she noticed that the older adults in her life, like her mother and her mother's friends, struggled with technology. And that's when she started her entrepreneurial journey. So on this episode, she'll be telling us about how and why she made that transition from being a teacher and how she lets God guide her. Um, in her journey in her business and in her life. Hi I'm Bev Jessup and I'm a therapist and a coach and I help other therapists and coaches and creatives to get their business online by showcasing the tools and the tech tools so that they're not overwhelmed. So if you're interested in all things tech and want to know how to get your business, your skills, your talents out there in the real world then stay tuned and subscribe to this channel. Let's get to it. So welcome, Melissa. So lovely to have you here on Women in Action podcast. Thanks for having me. So um, I wanted to dive in, first of all, to if you could tell us where you're from and uh, a little bit about um, what you used to do um, in your former career. Perfect. Well, I am from Colorado. I grew up in a town called Arvada, and I haven't really left. I've lived here my whole life. I started teaching when I was 21 years old after graduating from college, and I actually got my first job in the same town where I grew up. And so I taught in that same town of Arvada for 18 years, and I really loved teaching. It definitely was where my heart was, where I felt called. And, and then in my last few years of teaching, I started feeling like maybe God was calling me to something else. And I didn't really plan to ever leave teaching. I thought I had to retire and spend my whole career there. But when I turned 40, I had um, an event in my personal life happen. And it really made me rethink where I was, what I was doing, and if there was a plan other than what I had been you know, so comfortable in for my whole adult life. And so I really got out of my comfort zone. I decided I was going to leave teaching. And like you said, I started a business and now I, I teach adults, um, mostly in retirement communities, how to become more comfortable with technology. And the ultimate goal is to help them take the stress out of it, because I think that generation feels very frustrated with technology. So yeah. I've been doing that for the last three years. I can really identify with that because I mean, um, when I go and see my mum, you know, I'm, I'm trying to explain to how WhatsApp works. And um, the last time, last week, I went to see her and I was explaining to her about disappearing messages and yes. how that works. And she was convinced that um, she hadn't put that on. And I was trying to explain that actually the other person put it on. Um, and she really didn't get it, you know, but um, and it must be quite, you know, frustrating for that older generation because they still want to be in touch and um, in a connect with their grandchildren or their children and uh, that sort of thing. So um, what what sort of impact did that sort of like sorting out digital photos? What impact did it have on um, your mom and her friends and ultimately the retirement villages that you went into? I think that was just the starting point for me. And so my mom really loves her pictures as all of us do. Well, most of us do. And as she, you know, took more and more pictures on her phone, most of us have been taking pictures from our phones for about 20 years. So we probably have tens of thousands of pictures on our phones and it's really become clutter. And a lot of older people don't really know how to access their phone, the pictures on their phone very quickly. And they want to share pictures of their grandkids. And so I feel like I've just, that was kind of where I started. I also love pictures. I have been the family historian for 20 years. I'm the one who always takes the pictures, prints the pictures, makes photo books. I make calendars for my entire family every year for Christmas with pictures in them. And so I started showing my mom how to do this herself. And her and my dad had gone on a trip to Europe. They went, came home with 3000 pictures and 
were trying to swipe through their phones to show us their pictures. And as you can imagine, me and my sisters and then all of our kids who are, you know, in their teen or younger years weren't very patient or interested. And so I just really helped my parents get their pictures organized, printed them in a photo book. And that was kind of how it all started. And I started really helping people with their pictures. I think the biggest outcome I've noticed is people haven't realized how easy it was just because they feel a little bit intimidated asking their kids or grandkids to help, or maybe they're not overly patient in helping them, you know, oh, let me show you how to do it. And they flip through things really quick. And it's really hard for people to follow if you're not comfortable with technology. And so I was able to slow down and be really patient and present. And if they had questions. I feel like my teaching background really gave me that, you know, experience I needed to really walk them through anything they felt frustrated with. And then my classes started morphing into things beyond pictures. And I realized, you know, this age group and, you know, anyone over 40 really who didn't grow up with technology, like our children have Mm. could really use some help with technology. And so my business has grown in a lot of other ways, but it really started with pictures. Yeah. So, so tell us about the kind of different courses that you now have on offer I know you've got it on your website but do you do on you do online courses as well as you know it, live events is that right yeah so I I started teaching in person mostly in retirement communities and then I had a lot of the people who took my classes have friends or siblings or even their own kids live in other parts of the world besides Colorado and they asked if there was a way I could share what I'm doing with, you know, their loved ones. And so I started slowly putting my classes online so that I can reach people beyond my bubble here in Colorado. And um, so I have the class on how to organize your digital pictures. I have a class on how to scan printed pictures. I don't know about you, but you know, before 2000, I have buckets of photos from yeah. my childhood and even, you know, college my kids, my oldest son, all of his pictures are printed. He's 18. And I wanted to make sure I had a way to protect the pictures in case we ever had a fire or a flood or a box got lost. And so I put together a class to help people scan and digitize their printed pictures. I also have classes on how to make photo books or calendars. I started teaching people how to make greeting cards using their own pictures because yeah. greeting cards at the store are getting so expensive. So expensive, and and so I expensive. kind of think of the uh, website where you can buy um, photo greeting cards. I and mean, there's various ones, aren't they? And they do cost quite a lot. So well, and the ones you can make on your own can cost a couple dollars, two dollars here in America. Yeah. And so I've started teaching people how to make their own cards because even if you have a few friends or siblings, grandkids, kids, you could spend a lot of money every year just buying cards that they probably throw away, you know, right after you leave. Yeah. And exactly. so I feel like that's been a really fun class to show people how they can save money and make sentimental greeting cards for birthdays, anniversaries. Yeah, so it was, it was fascinating talking to you earlier about how uh, God has led you along the way. And I suppose like, you know, with all our, our journeys, I, I do find sometimes I say to the Lord, I don't want to do this. Oh, don't make me do this. And getting out of my comfort zone. Um, did you ever have any of those struggles like sort of resisting? I don't really want to do it. I don't feel I can do it. Or And then just realizing that God is calling you to do this this every day I still feel like I struggle with it every day and when I left teaching I didn't make it to my retirement year I was very close but I was at 18 years and it's you know my goal was to at least get to 30 but even if I would have made it to 20 years my retirement would have been pretty easy and so when I left it my 18 year mark I had a lot of people you know telling me I was crazy because I was so close and I put in all this time and I really felt God leading me in that time in particular, that it was time to go from my teaching career. And so I felt very convicted to listen to God at this point. And also it was very difficult because the world around me was kind of saying otherwise, you know, my friends, I had a couple really close friends, my husband, my parents, my sisters were my biggest cheerleaders, but I also had a lot of people who just thought I was absolutely crazy And in the end, I felt like it was the perfect time and God had this planned because COVID hit. I started Mm -hmm. my business in COVID 
And so by the time I started teaching in-person classes, I felt like a lot of the people in these retirement communities where I was teaching were really lonely and they were sick of doing things on computers. And so it just felt like the perfect time to come back in person. And I was able to be someone to, you know, be in their world and teach them something, give them a little confidence after so many years of just feeling kind of defeated. And so every day I just remind myself of all the things God's brought my way, the way, all the ways my business has pivoted has been amazing. Yeah. I've met really, really great people that I can't even tell you how they came in my life. I just kind of say yes. And I jump in with both feet and I've felt like God's really led me and provided opportunities. And so whenever I feel down, even now, you know, sometimes I have this little feeling, feeling of, should I go back to teaching? Cause it's very predictable and yeah, steady income. And yeah, because yeah. obviously when you are setting up on business, then you haven't got that steady income. You've got to make it happen, haven't you? And um, yes. but tell us about that story about the emergency preparedness. I've never heard of that phrase before, and I was fascinated. What what was that all about? Yeah, so that class in particular was a hundred percent a God thing. I had been teaching for about a year and a half in these retirement communities, and they were very close to a suburban fire we had here in Colorado. And the fire completely devastated an entire community, a whole town. And it was in the dead of winter, which is not typical of when we see fires here. And, you know, snow was on the ground, but there was this fire in the middle of winter and hundreds of people lost their homes. And my husband and my sister knew a lot of people because they work in that area. And then all of the communities where I teach were just a few miles away from where the fire was. Mm -hmm. And so people started, you know, it was just, it brought to our, you know, in our space, we could see how devastating it was for people to lose their homes and be left with nothing. And I started listening to all the town hall meetings for the town of Superior, which is where the fire happened. And I realized all of these things in place that the emergency, you know, people who are coming in, you know, if you had had record of your belongings, it's easier for you to show your insurance company. This is what I need you to pay me back for. But a lot of people didn't have some of those things in place, which most of us don't because you just never think something like that will happen to you. And as we watched all of these people through the recovery process, we realized how difficult it was for them. And I also learned a lot of things that maybe we could learn from that, that we could take and be proactive for ourselves. So I put together this emergency preparedness class and I started teaching the people in the communities where I was already working, how to take a home inventory, basically how to keep a record of everything you have in your home in case anything ever happened. And then you have something to show your insurance company. I show people how to put other things in place just in case you ever had to evacuate your home really quickly. There are some things you could do now, simple steps you can take right now so that God forbid that ever happen. But if it does, you've already kind of thought through these things as you're needing to get out of your house very quickly and you've put things in place. And so that class has been really probably the most unexpected part of my business and also it's been probably helped me grow my business the most. I've started working with insurance people, with um, realtors, with mortgage brokers. I've started speaking about it and sharing this information locally. And I feel like it's been a way for God to work through me in order to help people just think about some of these things. And again, it's like insurance. Hopefully you never need it, mm -hmm. but we have insurance in case we do. And so these are some of the same ideas. You you just prepare ahead of time and you hope you never need it. But then if you do, at least you've taken some time to think through these really important things that could be life-changing in the aftermath of a fire or a flood or I don't know what big events you all so, have in the UK, but you know, those things are happening in America yeah. more and more often all the time. Exactly. Yeah. And so when you um think about your faith. Um, and your walk with God, what what impact has that had on your business, on your life, the way you bring up your kids and, you know, just generally? It's funny you ask that. I just dropped my twins who are 13, 13 year old boys. I just dropped them off today, about two hours ago for church camp. They're going up to the mountains here for the week. And I feel like 
just showing my family, my kids specifically, that it's important to trust God and that sometimes you think your life is on a certain path and then you find out God has other plans. And I think a lot of us and a lot of my life, I just kept going on my plan and what I thought I wanted. And ultimately I wasn't, you know, I just knew something was missing. Maybe I wasn't overly thriving or happy. And so it wasn't really until I trusted God in this journey in particular that I feel like I've been able to really model for my kids, how important it is to trust God and, and remind them he always takes care of us. And I feel like my kids have really, I've been very lucky. All three of our boys um, are believers and they talk about their faith. And, you know, I, I think that's a big part of our family. I know that's Uh, We're lucky it's not for everybody, but for us, it's definitely been how we've gotten through a lot of hard times. And when we go through struggles, we're able to reflect on how could, you know, we rely on our faith to get us through this. So I feel like uh, our relationship with God and our family, specifically in the last probably four or five years, it's the most important thing before anything else. So I'm very grateful. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, it's, it's been wonderful talking to you. And before we go, I've got some quick fire questions. I'm going to put my glasses on because I can't read them from here. <laughs> um, so what would you say was your favorite Bible verse and why? Um, I like Philippians 4, 6. I've always loved that verse about not being anxious. I'm I'm kind of working on not being such a worrier, but my natural instinct is to be a worrier. And so I like that verse just about not being anxious about anything and giving it to God, because uh, most of the time, the things I worry about don't really even come in, you know, come to fruition. And I just somehow I just always go to worry. And so I really like that verse to remind me to give it to God. He has a plan. Yeah, you're not you're not alone in that. I think we all worry about things and it it feels so much better when you actually give it to God and you thank him for what you do have I think gratitude is so important isn't it right um so what favorite book uh would you recommend for Christian women who are starting out on their entrepreneurial journey I like Jenny Allen's get out of your head I've done some of her women's conferences I don't know if you know her she's a great Christian author she has a podcast books conferences but her book get out of your head is really great. It's all about how specifically as women, we make up stories all the time and we just go down rabbit holes of things that just we make up. And so reminding us to get back to the word or the Bible or be in community with other Christians and um, nipping those stories in the bud and almost seeing them as it's more of, you know, the enemy kind of trying to poke at us and remembering that God has a plan and you don't need to worry so much. So I love that book in personal life and professional life. I'll definitely have to look that up. So what would be your favorite podcast? I, in the last year, my parents have got me hooked on Joel Osteen and it's hilarious because I'm not a TV preacher kind of guy at all. But his podcasts are very short. They have great lessons. He's really funny. And so, um, and he kind of, his message is really loop. So I feel like if you listen to a lot of them over time, you hear the same message. It just shared in different ways, but I love his podcast right now. Oh, so do you have any spare time and what do you do in your spare time? I am definitely a relationship person. So I do have spare time, especially now being my own boss. I love that I can create my schedule how I want it. So I spend any time I can with my boys, which I have three teenage boys. So they're not always dying to hang out with us. So when they don't want to, I love hanging with my family and my friends. I love going for walks, getting coffee, you know, going to the lake, going to the pool, anything outside, especially we live in beautiful Colorado and that's very lovely for that. But just really any quality time with friends and family is what I love to spend my extra time doing. Yeah. And do you have a, the last quick fire question is, do you have a top tip that you would give to um, anyone who's running a business or thinking of starting a business? I think this kind of came out of actually teaching my last few years of teaching. We talked a lot about growth mindset with our students and how, um, you know, the idea of failure is going to happen. 
And so instead of feeling so defeated by it and looking at it as a negative, instead looking at it as a positive way and what can you learn from it? Mm -hmm. And I think that's really helped me in my journey of knowing that there will be times I'm going to fail all the time, but if I can learn from it and take some lessons out of it for the next thing I do, it's probably for my good. And so I think definitely just looking at failure in a positive light instead of a negative. Yeah, I always I always um, say that mistakes are like learning opportunities. Yeah, I love that. Um, yeah. So how can people find you um, if they want to connect with you? So my website is stepbysteptech.org. And I'm on LinkedIn. It's just my name, Melissa Foot, Colorado. So either of those ways is probably the best way. Great. Thank you so much, Melissa, for coming on Women in Action podcast. And I look forward to connecting with you in the future. Bye. Thanks for having me. You too. Thank you for watching until the end. If you want more information on how to build your website, funnels, courses, memberships and email list, then visit mavenbusinesshaven.com forward slash tools. And there you'll see all the information. See you next week.